You've done hundreds of articles on local history. H how do you go about choosing which subject you want to look at? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> it mainly comes down to what I'm interested in, what I think other people will find interesting. Uh, sometimes it's fairly run-of-the-mill, and other times it's really quite exotic. Um, I mean, the exotic ones sell themselves. I mean, who could, there's, there's a wonderful one about a man in Biddeford in the 1860s who his leg becomes mortified, and he's in bed one night, and it drops off. I mean, who could resist a story like that? It's just so wonderful. But others are more everyday things about everyday life, and people find that they can, they can think... Yes, that could have been me a hundred years ago, but uh, obviously dropping legs off it isn't quite normal. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, you clearly write a lot of fact-based articles. Are you ever tempted to write fiction? No. <laughs> Fair, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's okay. Um, how would you encourage young people to become interested in history? In our current economic climate, people could be dropping history for more vocational subjects. Yes. Um, I'm actually a geography teacher. So it's not my job to actually inspire people with history, but um, I do, I, I teach at North Devon College and I, I, I use a lot of historic photographs in my lectures, but I, because I'm a tutor there, I get a lot of students who come up to me and say, oh, I want to work in the media. And you say, and you always, I always ask them the first question, and what have you published? And they look at you slightly, oh, no, no, I'm going to university, and then I'm going to write. You say, no, you write now. And I always tell them, write something for the journal and put it into the editor and see if they'll print it. Because if they go for a university interview, if they've got a portfolio of material, it helps enormously. Mm. And also, a lot of them have this romantic idea about writing that it's going to be easy. And it's actually quite hard to sit down with a blank page and write something down if other people want to read it. And um, so I always tell them, publish something now. Mm. Um, that's the only advice I give. Are you ever affected by writer's block? No. Um, <laughs> I'm working on three books at the moment. I, I try and do lots of things at once. That's easier. Um, but no, I never have been. Okay, here's an interesting question. If, if you could have lived anywhere else at any other time in history, where would it be and when? I think I'd say I wouldn't want to live anywhere else in history because the one thing that really comes out is just how hard an often really painful in physical sense living in the past was. That's the one thing that comes out overwhelmingly, the cruelty, the pain, the lack of hope, really. It really is quite terrible. Um, I'm not saying that you know, everything's negative, but it really isn't as good as some... The good old days never really existed. OK. Um, I've lived in North Devon all my life, and even in that time I've seen a lot of changes. In your lifetime, what has been the single biggest change in this area? In this area? Well, I came here in 1976. I've only lived here, like, 33 years. But I think the, the biggest change is the townscape. Because when I was writing one of my books, I, I sat down I, and I needed a conclusion. It was a history, history, of, sorry, history of Biddeford. And I wanted a conclusion. I thought, I look back over the last 30 years and just you know, list a few changes. And I was quite astonished at the number of changes. I mean, you just look at Biddeford, you've got the link road, you've got the supermarkets, you've got new industrial estates, new roads, new um, housing estates, new shops. And it is quite astonishing, the pace of change mm. that we've seen just the last 30 years. Um, somebody the other day lent me, there's about 100 photographs of shop fronts in Biddeford. They went round and they photographed them in 1976. And you look at these shop fronts and you think, some of them look positively pre-war, 1930s, and it looks so antiquated. Mm. And it really does bring it home, that the pace of change. Is it important for you to capture and document history? It is, because firstly, I'm a geographer and I'm interested in change. And so I'm always interested in new things. Secondly, I'm a councillor, and so the new changes come through the council, and oh. I get to shoot my mouth off about them. Um, and that's quite interesting. I've been on the planning committee for years. And thirdly, the history, as you say, the, it's worth documenting because there's another book in it. <laughs> how, how do you think, in general, the public respond to your work? All my books are out of print, um, <laughs> apart from... 
One, I, I brought out two last year. One I've still got some copies of, and I brought out two two days ago. So they're the only ones still in print. So somebody buys them. Do you have complete freedom to write what you want in the journal and the articles? Oh, that's an interesting question. Obviously, in the articles, I can write, yes, anything I like, because there's no comeback to the journal, because it's in history. There's nobody still alive who's going to get very cross. Although I did have one once I'll be referring to this morning. But in terms of what I write, my weekly column in the journal, I've been censored a couple of times, but that's when I get a bit party political, where people... The editor doesn't really like that. Um, but other than that, I, the journal has been extremely good and allowed me to publish anything. And in fact, next week, I'm having a real go at RMP. It's going to be interesting to see if that turns up. But uh, we shall see. <laughs> what do you think of the Appledore Book Festival and how do you think that affects you? I love it, actually. Um, I do a lot of talks, but these are what I regard as my serious talks because it's a paying audience. Usually they're local groups who... I, I get a fee, but it's not really the, quite the same thing and I do approach it in a very different way, actually. And uh, I really enjoy doing them. Um, it's quite a large audience as well. But it's something I look forward to every year. I'm doing two talks this year for my pains. So, but um, I like sharing things with people. And it makes a change from talking to my students, uh, who obviously haven't paid to be in my lesson. But uh, they seem to enjoy my lessons. But here you get a real rapport with the audience. And there's a lot of feedback afterwards. I mean, one of the things, when I talked last year, some of the feedback I got actually went into the article, which was then republished in a hardback book form by someone else, not by me. But, uh, so that was really exciting, the ongoing history. Yeah. Mm. OK, well, good luck later, and Thank thanks you. for talking to me.